celebrate International Women's Day, we from Pandemic Periods are launching Menstrual Equity, Rights, Voices and Dignity web series. We will bring together real stories of activists around the world trying to make menstrual equity a reality in their communities. On our first episode, we are going to Brazil. We are talking to Elena Branco from Girl Up Brazil, a youth activist fighting for menstrual equity. Please welcome Elena Branco. Hi everyone, my name is Elena. I'm 20 years old and I'm from Sao Paulo, Brazil. First, I'm going to go through the progress we have seen in the menstrual movement here in Brazil and the initiative that I co-lead called Livre para Menstruar or Free to Menstruate. So in April of 2020, leaders from Girl Up and Brazil, which is a global movement that trains, inspires and connects young women from 13 years old to 22, we created the movement Free to Menstruate in Brazil. And it all started in the first period of quarantine that we had here in Brazil, in which we observed that most essential items baskets delivered for people in vulnerable settings didn't include menstrual products. And besides, since it wasn't um, also legally included in the baskets, taxes upon the products were higher because they were not considered essential. So in June, we got our first legislation approved, which was an amendment that included menstrual products on the central items baskets delivered by the state of Rio de Janeiro and therefore significantly reduced taxes upon menstrual products. And um, after that, we have already introduced nine state bills and have passed six up to date. Most that occurred in late 2020 and the beginning of 2021. And besides, in May of 2021, we created a model of a city bill and reached out to legislators to adapt it so they could introduce it in their city councils. Um, today, we have around 43 comprehensive and inclusive bills introduced slash passed and municipalities in all five Brazilian regions. And all that led by girls and in a collective movement close with the LGBTQIA plus leaders and the Black Coalition for Rights in Brazil. So in October of 2021, we had an absolute turning point for the movement. It was the presidential veto to the first federal bill concerning period poverty in Brazil, a bill that was introduced in 2019 and aimed to provide free menstrual products to people in vulnerable settings. And it was amazing because that motivated a strong rejection from civil society to the veto and got Congress to close a deal to vote and take down the veto to that public policy. However, due to government's articulation, only five months after the veto, on March 10th of 2022, representatives and civil society managed to put the veto on the voting session and it was finally taken down. And it was an incredible moment in which me and around 10 other girls from the Free to Menstruate movement, we were invited to step in the plenary of the House of Representatives um, in the voting session where we witnessed our victory. Um, still, the federal bill, which is now law 14 to 14 of 2019, um, and some of the political conversation around it is kind of conflicting with our efforts to ensure that the menstrual rights movement in Brazil is not just about having a way to, quote, manage the blood. Um, due to that, we're focusing on continuing to broaden the discussion on menstrual rights. And we are in a very special and specific moment now in the Brazilian politics because a new federal government was elected and we expect to strengthen the dialogue with the federal executive power and expand the current program we have, aka the one that was approved after taking down the veto. So wrapping up, what I believe that is so unique about our movement is that we are 100% led by girls and young women and we focus on structural change by focusing on creating and push, push to approve public policy in Brazil, um, either at the city, state, or federal level. And we really aim to take diversity in account, um, that diversity of the multiple um, people that are affected by period poverty. And free to menstruate was definitely historic. Um, there has never been a national effort so expressive of youth 
that approved so many laws. And especially in the Brazilian context, in which women make up around only 15% of elected legislators um, nationwide. Um, before 2020, it, I need to stress that period poverty was a, a theme completely ignored on the public agenda. And after our efforts, and of course from other organizations, it is now uh, nationally recognized as something that needs to be on the public agenda. And of course, I also need to stress how important it has been that our movement didn't focus only on the relation with the public sector um, for the creation of public policies, but also we invested in online and in-person awareness campaigns, not only nationally, but locally as well um, for the Brazilian population. And we also have a strong relation with traditional and non-traditional media. In fact, Free to Menstruate was featured um, on the first nationwide news piece focused on public on period poverty in Brazil that happened in 2021. And after that um, news piece, the topic was clearly more um, researched as we saw in Google Trends and it never got back to where it started, um, which for me makes it clear that period poverty is finally a public issue in Brazil. And that's it. Thank you for your time. It's an absolute honor to be here.